there. Welcome to the Field of Streams, where I, your host, Janine McRae, bring you the tiny thoughts that stream from my brain and present them to you as though they're a chore coat that does all your chores without you even having to wear it. So you can nip off to the pub or out for a bike ride or whatever, which is exactly what a chore coat should do. Mmm, as advertised. Now, I can't promise you much with these ill-fitting garments, but I can promise you this. I won't keep you long. Let's get on with it. You know when you read something and you're like, what? This story is cray-cray. That happened to me with the inspiration for this episode. I stumbled across a story about a pilot who crashed, not just once, but seven times in seven days. Now, you might be like me and think, One crash is really all you need, and perhaps they should maybe not let that pilot back in the air again? But there are a lot of little twists to this story, and I would say the biggest one is this one. I don't think I made it clear. It was the same plane every time. Seven times, in seven days, in the same plane. Hardy pilot, hardy plane. Both tough as nails. Has this movie been made? I would watch this movie. I mean, you would need to add like an actual plot that this subplot of crashing all the time, um, maybe a love story, maybe it could be a classic rom-com. Hollywood, I'll leave you to work that out. I put a link to this crazy story in the uh, episode description, but 10,000 foot summary. He bought this little kit plane, second hand, sight unseen, travelled across the country to pick it up and fly it back to his place of residence, which is when the numerous mishaps occurred. None of these mishaps were fatal, and up until the seventh crash, uh, totally recoverable from. But the last crash, crash number seven, he crashed into Lake Michigan. <laughs> it's, uh, that'll do it. I should point out that it was an amphibious aircraft, so technically that should have been okay. He should have, you know, just did a water landing, but um, the landing gear was stuck down before he attempted this water landing, and I guess those little little legs hanging down from the craft just hooked straight into the water and dove bomb him straight under. Anyway, it popped up for a bit. Uh, he got rescued, and... Uh, Then it promptly sank to the bottom of Lake Michigan, at which point we say goodbye. Yeah, it's a good story, and it inspired me so much. His resilience, his continual making it work, getting back in the cockpit and flying again, it made me think about how to survive crashes of your creative plane, whether it be a project or, let's go broad, a career. Like, how do you survive that crash? You can crash, and you will crash all the time. And just like the guy in the story, it ain't going to kill you. It's how you walk away that counts. Or swim away, if you've crash landed on water. Anyway, the thing I wrote, which I'm about to read to you now, is a guide to how to survive those crashes. So now, I invite you to sit back, relax, and allow me to read to you a piece of my writing called Creative Flight. A guide for art aviators. Glorious art aviator, congratulations upon purchasing your new, or gently used, Creative Pursuit aircraft. We are thrilled and elated to welcome you to the Patum Artem 2B family and promise you many years of flawless flight, providing your definition of flawless is somewhat in line with ours. You are no doubt excited to get up in the air and drop straight into a stall turn, but to ease you into the cockpit of this prestigious aircraft more effectively, we have compiled this handy guide to hip you to the unique quirks, foibles and shenanigans of this fine aeronautical marvel. While a license is not required to operate your new aircraft, those who have at least watched a few movies with in-flight footage of pilots operating controls or ones that show emergency procedures, not including ejection as we never abandon a creative pursuit in the Partum Artem 2B, will find mastering the skills needed to command and control the plane very intuitive. This guide is broken into seven highly skimmable sections for your convenience, covering what we consider to be the basics of operation for your new, or gently used, 
Creative Pursuits Aircraft. While we don't urge you to read any of the voluminous manuals that are included with the Partum Artem 2B, they are more suited to the H-minded people who like hard facts about the mechanical and aeronautical intricacies of machines, it is recommended that you consume this one before taking command of your cockpit. Flying blind is no easy feat, but we think you are up to the task. We look forward to seeing you in the air. Insert call sign here. See choosing a call sign name materials for more. Section 1. Taxiing and takeoffs and how to survive your first crash. Preparing for your first departure can be a daunting experience. Did you pack enough underwear? Will your carry-on fit in the overhead? Never fear. You are the pilot and stuffing a too big bag into a too small compartment will not enter your day. You do not need to fit. You are an art aviator. It goes without saying that you will taxi like a boss in the Partum Artem 2B. While this aircraft excels in the air, it is equally adept at taking tight turns and executing unexpected directional changes while on the ground. You may request a runway for departure or simply choose one at random. If you feel ready to take off with your project, there is only one way to find out, and that is in full and confident control of the Partum Artem 2B. If you hear chatter in your headset directing you to a specific runway, know that it means that the runway is clear, and if you want to have an obstruction-free takeoff, that's probably the one you want. Yeah, you should listen to the chatter and go for that one. Taxiing is like driving your car, but with the widest side mirrors you've ever seen, except you can't adjust your wings and objects are as close as they appear. Just saying. You may be required to cross other runways to get to your runway and be instructed to hold short, waiting for departure. If you are instructed to hold, this is the perfect time to check and make sure you have scheduled your social media announcing your creative takeoff. You will not have time while in the air with your latest creative gamble. There'll be time enough for liking when the flying's done. As you crash at the end of the runway, assume the brace position, and only after you come to a complete stop, note the number of runway lights you take out in your crash. We're not sure what the record is, but goals are goals, and any documentation you can make of it will increase your reach. Fun fact, increase your reach, for the skies, is the tagline for the Partum Artem 2B. Section 2, telemetry, doohickeys and dials, and how to survive your second crash. We may have these chapters in the wrong order, so before we forget, let's have a word about telemetry and things that go beep and the basic layout of the cockpit in the Partum Artem 2B. If you are sitting facing forward with the windows in front, you are facing the right way to pilot the aircraft. Good instincts! Now, a word on telemetry. It is a word, and we don't think it's important right now. There are a lot of numbers, and some things in here actually go ping sometimes at random times, which can be nice. The ping noises are the good ones. The buzz noises, not so much. Try to avoid the buzz sounds. Familiarising yourself with the instrument panel is simple. Sit in a relaxed position in your pilot's chair with your headset on. Wear a hat if that makes you feel more pro. A flight helmet might be a little too much, but if you spent money to get your call sign put on one, go nuts. If go nuts is your call sign, good one. As you rest your hands gently on the yoke, which is how you will control your pitch and roll, but you know this already, you know how to fly, not sure why we're even putting that sentence in, glance at the instrument panel before you. That's a lot to take in, isn't it? A bit overwhelming? What do all those numbers mean? What does that button do? Calm down. These are just numbers and guides to ease your path. Tap your finger on the glass. Did the needle twitch? Confirmation. You are good to go. Start your engines and see you on the ground. Your second crash will be a lot smoother than the first, so as you go to deploy your landing gear and one of those things on the instrument panel flashes red and there is a loud buzz sound to indicate that your landing gear has not been deployed and that this creative project is going to experience some severe feedback upon reception by the ground, note the warning. There is a good chance you will need to fill out a report. Section 3. Buzzing the tower and how to survive your third crash. The tower is like the eye of Sauron at the centre of Middle Earth's main airport. It sees all, sure, but that doesn't mean you can't buzz it. 
The low fly pass is considered by aviators to be a no-no and bad form and something that only happens in movies. But since your entire knowledge of flying is based on gut instinct and intuition and half-remembered things you've seen in film, you must take chances to get more eyes on your skills. This will increase the odds that your creative pursuit in the Partum Artem 2B will be a box office smash. This aircraft is designed specifically for completing daring challenges and pissing off people with clipboards and manifests. You must pass very closely to all towers in all airports. You must attempt to make eye contact with at least one person in the tower. If you receive unpleasant feedback as you do this, consider getting on the comms and asking, is my landing gear down? Just checking. This is what's known in creative aviation circles as covering your ass. As you are coming in too hot after passing the tower and on somewhat of a buzz yourself, prepare to smash your box office winner awkwardly on top of the ground. If you observe fire engines gathering, it is common to be concerned that you may be grounded after this or have your license revoked. This is why we recommend you don't get one. You will never lose your wings in the Partum Artem 2B aircraft. This is our promise to you. Section 4. Fields, freeways and golf courses and how to survive your fourth crash. The landing gear on your Partum Artem 2B aircraft is designed to deposit you gently to earth as a feather to a pillow and while landing at an actual airport is preferred, more foot traffic to see your flight skills, less grief about upsetting peak hour traffic, you can also land wherever the hell you want. It's your creative aircraft, your vision is your vision, and if your vision is low, you must land where you must land. Choose a flat field if you can, corn is always fun, pick a highway with no one on it, like in that Dylan song, and if you must choose a golf course, the ninth fairway is a good choice based on averages and bunker placements. If a fire breaks out upon landing, rage or actual, use the extinguisher found under your seat. Like bear spray, it works on people too. And if a critic is all up in your nose cone, telling you, you can't land here, you're an eyesore, whip off some quick quip, like, you want sore eyes? I'll give you sore eyes. And give a good squirt from the extinguisher's nozzle. If there is actual fire in your cockpit, put it out. And congratulations on surviving your fourth crash. That's some Harrison Ford slash Indiana Jones level shit right there. Section 5. Bird strikes and how to survive your fifth crash. Birds are lovely. Flocks, murmurations, geese flying south for the winter. Dreamy. Birds are also competition of the sky, drawing eyes away from the glory of your flight with their own. They are distractions, obstructions, always waiting and ready to take you down. Evil. That said, they are also the easiest way to get on the news. Ride the attention of their bad intentions. We recommend as you're approaching your fifth crash that you come up with a good story about a bird strike, whether it's the thing that brings you down or not. Remember, you are going to crash all the time. And as your work is failing, what the hell? Yell bird strike into the comms and the FAA calls foul on the foul, but you still get the hype. The body of water you choose for your fifth crash will depend on your proximity to it. Be aware. Check the charts. Don't ditch into the ocean. Your part of Artem 2B aircraft will be difficult. Not impossible, but it's a real arseache to locate in an ocean. But lakes are fine. Try to skim your aircraft like a skipping stone until you come to a complete stop. Look, Mum, no hands. Your aircraft is an amphibious vehicle and is equipped to land on water. There are buoyancy bags that inflate using the air of your ego and they keep the aircraft afloat for easy recovery at a later date. Always take time for recovery after each creative project crashes. This is a time for learning and reflecting. Please note that there is a seaplane upgrade that can be purchased for your aircraft. You can install it yourself and much like IKEA furniture, only requires a single Allen slash hex tool which is included in the package. For most people, the stock amphibious built-ins will be enough for choppy feedback after a bird strike and water landing. Section 6. How to fly in formation and survive your sixth crash. While being a top solo hot dog in the air is a goal, note that collaboration with other pilots and flying in formation is also a rewarding experience. 
Formations often attract larger audiences and get more eyes on your flight patterns. If you are new to flying in formation, please note that it is critical to maintain both visual and audio communication throughout the joint flight so as to not clip wings and experience no joy during manoeuvres. Should you accidentally clip wings with your formation buddy, assign blame upon crashing accordingly. Their vision was compromised or your vision was compromised. If the formation was a true collaboration, the blame should be applied equally and no fault found. Do not let crash number six dampen your enthusiasm for formation flying in your partum artem 2B. It is a nimble and curious aircraft. Give it room to soar. Section seven, aerobatics and how to survive your seventh crash. Aerial acrobatics is a natural fit for the Partum Artem 2B, especially when piloted by someone of your daring and skill. That said, know your hard deck and stay above it, or on it when you crash. Do not go under it. Good tricks to attempt as a skilled creative aviator include barrel rolls, tail slides, and the falling leaf. You will not be able to perform Pugachev's Cobra, yet... But don't forget the good old loop-de-loop -loop in your up to up ups as that is always a crowd-pleaser. The Partum Artem 2B is renowned for being easy to manoeuvre at high speed, and you will be afforded many opportunities to pull some Gs in your stunt aircraft. Please be advised to practice your anti-G straining manoeuvre regularly so as not to pass out from the pressure. There will be pressure. You are executing great art, and the blood must flow for you to continue wowing the world with your magnificent aerial feats. You may feel disheartened after your seventh crash, seeing as it occurred while attempting to pull off something daring. It may dissuade you from ever trying anything risky again. Please know that all your crashes, including crash number seven, will not be fatal. You will survive every crash in your Partum Artem 2B, and that's a guarantee. There will be a few dings, scratches and bruises to both you and the aircraft, but you will emerge each time practically unscathed and ready to fly again almost immediately. Nothing that happens during your many attempted creative flights will kill you. That is the beauty of the Partum Artem 2B. It exists to increase your reach for the skies. And long may she fly with you at the controls, Captain. Fun fact, did you know most crashes can be avoided by simply never landing? Stay airborne and see you in the skies. Signed, Sky Friends, Partum Artem Industries. And there you have it, this week's episode. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, Feel free to uh, share this episode with a friend or just, you know, like it or follow the podcast so you never miss an episode. That'd be good, wouldn't it? Anyway, I share these missives as a way of perhaps inspiring creative folk to get out there and make something of their own. Until next we meet, count down the hours. <laughs> uh, I'll leave you with this. No, really, this is what I'll leave you with. Love what you love and I'll see you out there making stuff.